This Sunday on Close Up, we are talking about the state budget, what Governor Sununu wanted and what it looks like he might get. We'll talk with him in studio about that, as well as a gambling proposal that's been pitched as well. And from Russian meddling to health care in America to tougher voting laws, our roundtable breaks down the political landscape in New Hampshire. Morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. Earlier this year, Governor Sununu delivered a budget address that reflected his vision for the state and how it spends its dollars. This week, House Finance released its plan, and while it is a long process, safe to say it wasn't exactly a carbon copy of the governor's proposal. So what does he think about it? My first guest this morning, Governor, good to see you. Thank you, Josh. All right, so let's shred this thing. Let's, let's shred this thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's a, a, obviously a lot of differences, and you pointed out immediately after House Finance put out their proposal that this is a long process in negotiations. But let's we'll start with kindergarten. That was something you talked about a lot during the campaign in your budget proposal, and it wasn't there from, from House Finance. Is that disappointing? Uh, it, it is disappointing, but it's not the end of the road by any means. Um, uh, it's a priority. You know, we, we tried to create a budget that was very fiscally conservative, but really focused on the priorities of the state. We talked about things like DCYF, Division of Children, Youth, and Families. We talked about kindergarten, actually finally coming up to par with where the rest of the country is in supporting and, and funding full-day kindergartens for communities that want it. Um, and we created a program that then takes that kindergarten piece and targets it to to areas of low income, English as a second language, areas where we know we can, we really need to close that what we call the opportunity gap. So kids entering the first grade really um, are really on the same page and they can uh, really push forward with, with their educational career. So um, there's a lot to it that, and, and again the House, the House took it out, the Senate did pass yesterday a standalone bill that financed and funded full day kindergarten, bipartisan, it was something like 21 to 2. Um, so the Republicans and the Democrats alike were on board and they're going to send that bill as a standalone back to the House. House, and I'm hopeful we get that passed. Yeah, so I mean, you, if it is to be revived, it's going to happen in the Senate, and that's a good sign for, for all day kindergarten, no question about it. Absolutely. And again, you know, as we go through the, the next phase of the budget process, it'll come out of the House hopefully next week. The Senate will add and subtract sure. and, you know, kind of do their thing, and then we'll get into a committee of conference, and that's where we'll get a little more involved and we'll try to hash it out and figure out what really what the, um, the best plan is for the state of New Hampshire. Well, let me get your take on a couple other things that uh, kind of flew under the radar in the House finance plan, uh, specific to the lottery, some changes that would in include Keno here in New Hampshire, it's not legal, and uh, uh, mobile, you know, mobile services basically an app for the lottery so you can buy on the go uh, what's your take um, I, I don't I don't mind Keno I don't I don't I'm not very passionate one way or the other about it you know the one area of the lottery where I'm still a little concerned is the idea of buying lottery tickets online over the internet I'm not saying no to it by any means but um, I, I have concerns because you know we want folks to be going into those grocery stores and that's a big a big sales product for a lot of the stores especially the border right. towns uh, along New Hampshire so it can have an impact there uh, it can have its benefits could it potentially raise revenue it might um, but you have to understand there, there could be other incidental consequences there. So the Lottery Commission does a great job here in New Hampshire. They really do, and we just want to make sure whatever we do going forward keeps it uh, robust and strong. Obviously, the top uh, issue facing the state, public health and safety, it has been for a while now, is the opioid and heroin crisis. Uh, are you satisfied that there is a consensus that uh, no matter how these dollars are applied, um, that everybody has the same sense of urgency and recognizes the need that this uh, I, I think so. I hope so. Uh, I can't speak for everyone. I mean, uh, some of the money in the alcohol fund was restored. I propose doubling the alcohol fund. I still think that that's where the state needs to go. We have a lot of projects. So it's the number one health crisis our state faces. Uh, just today, uh, believe it or not, I, I was told I was the first governor in 17 years to attend the Governor's Commission on Drug and Alcohol uh, uh, Abuse in the state. So uh, the f I, I wasn't trying to set any records. It is the Governor's Commission. Uh, but again, we're taking a very hands-on approach. We have some of the best and brightest folks as part of that group. I wanted to be in there, let them know kind of where I stood, listen to their ideas. Um, and then when you do that, when you get into those details, um, that's how you're going to get the best recommendations going forward, whether you're talking about recovery, prevention, uh, interdiction, uh, treatment. All of these things come into play. We, 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 we have some resources now. We need to increase those resources and be very hands-on about how we go about uh, implementing them and, and getting the results we need. Let me ask you a little bit more about the alcohol fund because Neil Kirk, Representative Neil Kirk on House Finance, yeah, ruffled some feathers this week. He's like, you know what, let's do away with this thing. It's antiquated. Uh, we never fully fund it anyway, so let's do away with it and just do direct appropriations. That way we can be more effective. Is there some merit to that argument? Um, I, I'm, I'm not in favor of that pathway, to be honest. Uh, I, I, again, I wanted to double the alcohol fund. Uh, it, it allows those appropriations to be focused and directed to that specific need. Uh, when you just make a, an appropriation straight out of the general fund uh, that isn't really specific, it's very easy to, for that to, to disappear or get swiped away into another program. So I like that it, it's targeted. Uh, 
uh, the way it's designed now. Um, and I think, again, given that this is the highest uh, health care crisis that this state is facing, it's something we need to focus on. Yeah. Uh, talk about voting laws. Uh, bill that uh, Senate Bill 3 passed the Senate, as expected, down party lines, basically toughens identification standards when you get to the polls. Now, strengthens. 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 Strengthens, toughens, uh, yeah. potato, potato. But, uh, you know, Senator Jeff Woodburn, who obviously was not in favor of this, as most Democrats aren't, uh, said this is all just a mirage created by mostly Donald Trump and his statements of widespread voter fraud coming up here, even having to, even, hmm. you know, defend New Hampshire's integrity in the elections after some of those statements. What do you make of this bill, and do you feel like some Republicans do that it doesn't quite go far enough? Uh, well, I can tell you this has nothing to do with Donald Trump, first and foremost. Um, uh, there were... Uh, this, these allegations of, of voter fraud and all that. I have no evidence of, of voter fraud in the state. The fact is that some of our voter laws, compared to the rest of the country, are being some abused. Of, they're being, well, they're ambiguous, right? I don't want to say they're being abused because they're so loose, right? It, it's they're, the definitions of what is domiciled, of, of what, is it, what is a resident, all of that, um, they're so loose. So it's just a matter of putting integrity into the system. And again, this is a, a measure that is being supported by uh, Democrat Secretary of State Bill Gardner, right. one of the first and foremost authorities on voter law in the country. So um, to say that this is uh, some sort of bipartisan, uh, a partisan measure, it's not. It's really not. It's about strengthening our system, a system that we take very seriously here in the state of New Hampshire. Ah, so you didn't want to use the adjective of abuse, but the, the, the Secretary of State has, and basically mm -hmm. saying, you know, a lot of people are abusing it, stretching the law, violating the spirit of mm -hmm. it by coming up here with no intention to live here, maybe working for a couple of weeks on a campaign, mm -hmm. and then voting. Uh, in fact, since 2012, the sponsor of the bill says it 2,200 challenge letters that go out to verify addresses of these same-day mm -hmm. registrants were turned undeliverable. Now, we live in a small state. Are you at all concerned that you know, one of these days, if something isn't addressed, you know, we could have a national embarrassment. Uh, oh, with, without a doubt. Right. Oh, no, that's, that's exactly what we're, we're trying to deal with here. Um, so, look, there's clearly a problem with the system, right? Is it fraud? No, I'm not going to say it's fraud. That implies something illegal is happening. But our, our system just has a lot of ambiguity, a lot of gray areas. You just tighten those gray areas up, just like virtually every other state in the country has done. We're behind the times here. We're just trying to catch up. Um, we are the first in the nation primary. With that comes the responsibility of having a system with full integrity. How disappointing pointed are you that Republicans were not able to put together a plan uh, to replace the Affordable Care Act? Um, you weren't, you weren't very, very. Your yeah, plan. no, I, I was not thrilled with what was proposed, but my hope was that I, I wasn't fully against it. I, I was simply saying we need to amend it, right? We need to provide flexibilities. We need to provide um, a f for the states. We need to get rid of a lot of these unfunded mandates uh, that are out there, the mandates uh, that people have to buy, not just have to buy health care, but health care with a whole litany of things that might not really pertain to them. We're not giving the, the purchaser the freedom. We're for First of all, we're forcing them to purchase something they might not want, and then we're not giving freedoms within that system. There's no more free market in the insurance system right now. There really isn't. Um, uh, the, the insurance system, the premiums that have skyrocketed, um, we were told those were going to go down. They haven't. Uh, we were told that uh, you're going to be able to keep your doctor. You, you weren't necessarily able to do that either. Um, and so what we see is as premiums skyrocket, those are all skyrocketing because of the political whims of Washington, not necessarily because of the, the free market dynamics. We have to return insurance companies and providers back to a true free market dynamic system, uh, and you do that by allowing states to have flexibility in designing that system. So the original proposal as put by Congress, I don't think did that. I was hoping they would amend it. It didn't, didn't pass at all. I'm still very hopeful that they'll come back to the table sometime in the short term, maybe this summer, maybe even uh, uh, later this fall, uh, and really put something on the table that, that provides states those flexibilities and gets the job done. And where does this leave the future of Medicaid expansion? We have 50,000 people on the rolls here in New Hampshire, roughly because of that, which is under the Affordable Care Act. Um, and that's not something you said you needed to do away with entirely. You wanted to tailor it to fit New Hampshire mm. better. But from what we have right now, how do, we, how do you go forward with Medicaid? Well, so Medicaid expansion will be taken up by this state next spring, as, as was originally intended. Uh, so, again, my hope is that Washington figures out what kind of platform and foundation they're going to provide sometime this fall. Um, in doing so, um, we can then have more flexibility with the dollars coming in uh, to design a system that meets people's needs. People have to understand right now the state uh, doesn't pay for any of expanded Medicaid, and that's a good thing. The federal government pays 95%, 5% is picked up by the private sector, so the no state 
direct state tax dollars uh, go into that system. If, if Medicaid gets completely chopped down to 70, 60, 50 percent in terms of the, the federal share, um, it's going to be very, uh, very tough, if not impossible, to fund. And that's not just for New Hampshire, for virtually every state in the country. We, this only exists because the federal government kicks in such a large proportion of it. So um, what the federal government does really is going to have an impact how, how we can go forward, if at all. And there's a lot of things we could be talking about. We only have a couple of minutes left, and uh, uh, it's the last time I'm going to be talking to you in this capacity, so I just want to ask you The a next time you have to let me interview you. Now okay, that would be something, huh? <laughs> the, let, seriously, I, the stories you must have over the past 20 years in this business, and finally you can, you, we, we can tell them. And who better to tell than the governor? <laughs> He's got me there. All right. Uh, well, we'll talk about this at another time. But for you, the job of governor. I mean, are you enjoying it? Are you having fun? What's I, the best I, part? I love it. I do. It's a lot of work. Um, the one thing I will take a lot of direct credit for is I've built a great team. I really have built a great team uh, in the office, and, and we've set a priority of changing the tone of politics, right? Nationally, we know how ugly it is. It's bipartisan. It's black or white. You're with us or you're against us. That isn't the way we should be doing things in New Hampshire. We've got to work on, in bipartisan ways. We've got to work across the lines, and we've got to stay positive. Um, we've got to establish our personal relationships, make sure that those are the foundation of getting things done in our local communities and at the state level so we don't let the partisan politics uh, really separate us apart. Kindergarten is a great example. It's a great bipartisan and measure. People understand what it needs to get done. It's something I've championed. Other folks have gotten on board with, and we're driving forward. On. There's a hundred other other uh, examples out there. But again, it doesn't mean you, 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 we, we want a state of everyone being independent necessarily. But it's 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 okay to get along with folks that might not be uh, agree with you politically. It's okay to to have a cup of coffee with someone and and, and share a sandwich if, if necessary with folks, so you can have those discussions. That's the new tone we're setting here, uh, and I, I'm having a great time doing it. And we have less than 30 seconds. Are you anxious to take out the Black Hawk one of these days? National Guard? Um, I, usually not at a good some point, happens, at, you gotta uh, get up there, right? I would love to, I, I guess I'd love to go for a ride, as they say, but, uh, you know, I, as, I guess as long as I don't need to be in it, things must be pretty good in the state. So, uh, for the time being, I'll keep two feet on the ground. Good stuff. Well, sir, thank you very much. It's thank been you, a pleasure Josh. covering you, and as a resident of this state, certainly rooting for your success. And good luck with the next adventure. Thank you much, All sir. Right. Good to see you. We're right back with the discussion with our roundtable. Stay with us.